Welcome to the Lotus Map Editor tutorial. In this episode we want to talk about cars. Doesn't matter if they are parking or if they are driving. Let's start with the parking cars. This feature is implemented for quite a while, but I missed this completely on this channel, so it's not that hard, so we will rush through this. You need to know two things about the parking cars. The first thing is in the category generics, you got a parking lot object. Yeah, so you need this parking lot object. I'm gonna place it as a normal scenery object. And this object declares the space for the car. You see that there is a direction where the car is heading. In theory, there is a space for the cars where something like 90% of every car which is ever created fits in. And this is obviously this box. There are two uh, important things to know. The first thing is this green plane declares the height of this object. So if you can see this green plane, this parking lot object is on the correct height. But only if, and I will change the height a little bit, uh, only if this red plane is not above the terrain, because you obviously want that the tires are standing on the terrain and you want the shadow underneath the car. You got these two margins. You want to uh, be within with your height of this object. I normally put these scenery objects a slightly bit above the uh, normal terrain. So these are like two centimeters or something like that. So if there's a little bumpy terrain or something like that, you won't have an effect on the shadows or on the tires. This parking lot object has a very important property. So we go to the object properties of this parking lot and you see this list index. For the next step, it's important to know this list index starts with zero and then goes upwards to whatever you want. But the important thing is that the index starts always with zero because if you go to a generic, a general configuration, and go to parking cars, you can set up this list of parking cars. So first click on add, you got an untitled list. After you uh, added this list and selected this, you can change the name to, uh, I don't know, auto one or something like that. Now you remember the list starts with the index of zero. This is the list with the index zero. You can add several other lists which have an incremental index the index of the next list would be one and two and three and so on, but this has the index zero. Further, you have to add some cars. We'll take the uh, normal car from Germany from the 70s. It's called Ente in German. So to add these cars, you click on add. You got this car. You can select the uh, basic type of this car and also can select the repaints. So we add a blue repaint, we add a white repaint and an orange repaint. The basic functionality is you select a uh, list item and then you can choose the special car or repaint for this list item. Now we can click on OK. Fortunately, this list index is already zero. So when you will start the uh, simulation, this parking lot will have either a car out of this list or no car, because in the options you can set how many percent of these parking lots will be filled with cars. For example, I got 50%, so 50% of the parking lots on the map I will play are filled with these cars. Let's move on to the driving AI. For the next time, we use highly frequently the streets category. Within the streets category, you can create a new road path or a new parallel road path, as you already know from other things like splines, rail tracks or um, subgrades. You also can handle the traffic lights, as you already know 
from the videos I created. And the new thing is you can change some settings of a path. We will discuss this later on. So if you click on the streets category, there are some more and new uh, line construction things. First thing is you need the uh, width of this road path. In general, it's around about three meters, but you can change the width dynamically afterwards. If you know that the width is a little bit wider or a little bit smaller than these three meters, you can set these settings in at once. Basically, I recommend to set these settings in at once. And if you are uh, busy laying down some paths, I recommend to uh, uh, cancel the current path segment because if you uh, have to uh, set the properties afterwards, you have to do it for every road path segment each and this steals your time, obviously. So these settings you should set in advance and then you'll be fine. Next to the width, you got the maximum speed you can drive on this path. The standard setting is obviously 50 kilometers per hour. And next to the maximum speed, you got three settings, each for the left side and for the right side. You can see that there is a green dotted line on the left side, a yellow solid line or red solid line on the left side and also for the right side. This means you have to set if it is possible to drive out of this path, basically. There are some good explanations in the property windows. So we start with creating the path segment. Of course, you have to set up the height at first, which is the same as the terrain. It's a minus 0 0.15 in this case. And a very basic step is to unselect snap set because a path has an absolute height meanwhile the uh, splines you maybe uh, uh, want to align the path to these splines have a relative height and this is a thing you may have the relative height set to the path segment and for a real world map as this is which is on uh, 130 meter high you don't want uh, absolute height like zero or something like that this would be way too much underneath the terrain as i said you have to check the settings and we want to start on the uh, left lane so the right lane gets these green dots it's important to lay down the path segments in the two-dimensional mode because in the third dimension, it's hard to select the uh, path segments afterwards and maybe you need this. And also you can attach the uh, path segments to a spline. And of course, in the uh, game, these two elements are not logically connected to each other. I don't need to worry about this. So let's go to the properties of this path segment and scroll a little bit down. You got some important things to know. The first thing is these three properties, which defines if you are allowed to drive over the lane edge. The green dots mean it is allowed. So of course, on the right side of this lane, it is allowed to cross this lane edge. But on the left side, it's prohibited or you can choose on the left side between prohibited and impossible. In this special case, I decided to go with prohibited. You see here, if you drive over the left lane edge, there's only a normal curbstone and afterwards you drive on the grass. So if you would drive uh, to the left out of this lane segment, there might be no obstacle. But if you maybe on a path segment that is um, situated within a tram stop or a bus stop or something like that. You don't want that the cars can drive on the curbstone because if they would do this, they may be crashed into an object or into uh, passengers or something like that. Of course, this property is only used in 
a small amount of situations and this is only used if every other option fails. So take the serious but not too serious. Next thing is the maximum speed and uh, the priority. The priority defines which can drive first, which vehicle. And an important thing is always the difference between two priorities. So if two paths cross each other or, or merge into another segment and they both have the same priority, the guy coming from the right will drive it first and then you are allowed to drive. If you have the higher priority set up, of course, the car coming from the path with the higher priority will drive first. If you have a lower priority, you have to wait. Also, you can use priorities in, uh, underneath zero. So minus one is also a valid priority. And the last thing is the indicator. So they are either off, you can blink to the left, you can blink to the right, or you can um, blink to both sides. When you want to change the width afterwards, you can do this here, or obviously with these little squares you already know. The next thing is I want to create some more path segments to show you how it's done. Because, yeah, in fact, it's not that uh, difficult. But of course, you have to uh, watch for some important steps. The first thing is. And this is for some traffic lights. You see here, you got the stop line. And if you want to add this path segment to the uh, traffic light system, you have to add the uh, path segment, which starts at the stop line. So the cars will drive until this point and wait for the green face of your traffic light system. Also for the moment, the cars can't despawn. So if you have a dead end, as this is, the cars will stop here and but won't despawn and create a traffic jam. I will post an update on this video if this changes. Also very important is that the path segments should not overlap each other when the paths are, are parallel to each other. So if we would add another path, which is uh, situated on this lane, on the left, you may have to adjust the width of this lane we set up earlier, because the left lane edge is a little bit too uh, uh, far on the left side. So you have to adjust the uh, width on the left side, maybe to something like this. And it's fine because if you uh, lay down two parallel paths, there should be a, a slight gap between them. They should not overlap or they should be that close to each other. So uh, the uh, width of this uh, street sign is a good gap between two paths, which are parallel to each other. This should be it about the paths. We now have to create some AI groups. So we go to general configuration and click on train plans. I don't be confused with this name of this window, but you can also create uh, AI groups in this window. First thing you can create a sub list. The sub list has a name like auto one. I'm very creative, you know, and you can create for a, a sub list for every special kind of cars. Like you can, um, obviously have a list for the normal AI cars with drive around uh, in the whole city. You can also have a special train, uh, a special uh, sub list for cabs or a special sub list for uh, an ambulance or the police or something like that. Each sub list gets it's elements from the main list. So you create some entries for the main list. If you want to add a car to this main list, in the most cases you need a concrete vehicle. 
we uh, stick to this in German called Ente. And when you click on this list entry, there are some uh, repaints available. These are the same repaints as in the uh, parking lot section. So we choose the white repaint and please, please don't be as stupid as I am. I created for uh, Dusseldorf also these uh, train plans and I did not add the repaint to the name of this car. So add a good name to this concrete vehicle so you can recognize it afterwards. So we have to do this uh, some more often. Maybe you... Oh, yeah. You see, you click on OK and it's done. So you choose the blue and the red vehicle. Mm. I always uh, miss to uh, set up the name correctly, as you can see here. And afterwards, you click on the file down below to add the uh, entries from the main list to your selected sub list. And now we click on OK and you go to the path. And at the moment, you don't see a train plan sub list in here. So you can click on all the one and also this group adjust. You can also click on several paths while holding the uh, shift key and set up the auto one or the traffic density. And um, you can set up the uh, train plan sub list or the traffic density. The traffic density is uh, either no traffic or extreme low or very low, low, normal or dense. You need, don't need a special explanation for this. When you got no road path segment selected and you want to know which density has the path segments you already created, you can choose special density. In this case, it's normal. And every path segment with the normal density gets selected in the second selection mode, which is uh, in here colored in blue. And then you know uh, which paths have, have which density. Last but not least, when adding the AI traffic, you also have to watch for the uh, rails again because they have to be added to the uh, traffic light systems too. This traffic light system has only some requests and some faces for the uh, tram cars. So you can't add a, rail, uh, a road path to this traffic light system by now. But you can of course add a tram track and maybe this tram track is when you click on select objects to this traffic lights, you choose the uh, east to west path. And this is very key that the uh, tram cars also are attached to this traffic light system. Because how should the cars know that you are standing in front of a red light? Of course, the cars recognize you as a tram car and would stand still until you are bypassed. But of obviously they can drive when you got a red light in front of you. So this was a bit more complex than I expected. To be honest, I hope my English was understandable, let's say. And I see you in the next video. Bye.